Nine deadly mistakes to avoid when asked for job references. Nowadays, looking for work is akin to selling a product, and you are that product. To execute a proper job hunt, make sure you polish your online presence and have a resume and cover letter. And don't forget professional references who can boost your application. Speaking of references, here are nine fatal mistakes to avoid when asked for endorsers. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of this Sweetie Kiwi Show, a wonderful show. I hope you are doing marvelous because I am. And if you are doing as marvelous as I am, go grab a cup of coffee and a tea. <laughs> what? No. I want to quickly give a shout out to some of our viewers and listeners before we delve into the nitty gritty here. I want to acknowledge today Isaac Carter in uh, Adelaide, Australia. Sky Leo in the same city of Adelaide, Australia, in Adelina Vega, in Adelaide, Australia. Thank you so much, Isaac, Sky, and Adelina. I really appreciate your support all the way from Australia. This is great. Number one, deadly mistake, telling lies. Now, telling a lie when asked for job references is morally wrong and professionally improper, right? Everybody knows about that. Now, Another thing that another thing you need to remember here is that it's illegal to lie about your references because, you know, if a, if a company hires you based on the quality of your of your reference or based on what your references has have told have told management of the company, if they hire you based on that, and it turns out later on that they are if they are able to prove the company is able to prove that you lied about those references or those references lied about you. They can fire you and they can seek damages they can seek financial damages from you so telling lies is the number one daily mistake to avoid when asked for job references number two having a set list of references in other words you don't want to give out your list too early right the what's very important here is to keep control of your references don't release your reference your reference list until you're asked to Sometimes I see people putting the putting references on their resume. No, this is a big no-no. And uh, there was uh, not long ago there was uh, um, there was a big report out of uh, Glassdoor that showed the importance of being strategic when it comes when it comes to your references, right? So submitting your list of references too soon lets the employer pick and choose who they'll contact right so you want to wait and you want to suggest one or two references most relevant to the job you have you've applied to and after contacting those those references now if your company if the recruiter asks for more jobs or makes a specific request such as they want to speak to your most recent boss you can respond accordingly right you know otherwise it could be that of a letter of reference you can actually have a letter of reference and that will be enough all right so this is very important make sure that you are strategic with your references don't put them on your resume don't list them on your LinkedIn profile wait for the right opportunity to submit those references another thing you want to do is make sure that you always talk to your former employer before giving their name giving them the name of a representative to your future company or to a company you're interviewing for all right number three overusing your endorsers this is the biggie don't use the same reference over and over and over this is called reference burnout so if one or more if one or more of your references has been contacted by an employer too often th that just makes them like you know think about it right the, the you don't want to you don't want to burn them out so if you and this happens when you go to interviews with several employers and this usually happens also when your job search goes on and on and on and on and on so be very strategic about it, references the best idea here is to have a large list of references from five to ten so you can pick and choose right so it, to avoid overusing your endorsers make sure you have as many references as possible all right i'll be right back right after this 
don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm still here talking to you about the nine fatal mistakes to avoid when asked for job references. I want to quickly give a shout out to Freya McCarthy in Bippus, Indiana, Dexter Hollow in Wabash, Indiana, and Scarlet Woods in Otterby, Indiana. Thank you so much for your support. If you just join us or you've been listening to us for, for the last few minutes, please consider subscribing to our channel. Turn on the notification bell so you are aware when we drop a new gem. We drop gems like this every single day. Share this content. Like it. Comment below. Let us know your experience when it comes to job references. And uh, give us the good, the bad, the uh, the in-between. We want to know everything. <laughs> Failing to re-alert references in a timely fashion. This is, this is an important one for me. What does this mean? It means that if you are going to, if you have, let's say, um, you are seeking jobs and you are applying for several jobs, right? Let's say you have five jobs that you 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 have you applied for, you have interviewed. Make sure that you keep your references in check. You want to keep them aware of your progress so that they can keep maybe their phone open, they can check their, their, their emails, they can expect being contacted by your prospective by a prospective recruiter so failing to re-alert references in a timely fashion is a very 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 significant mistake that a lot of uh, job seekers make and you want to avoid that number five not preparing your references adequately now this is important for you want to make sure that you brief you brief your references beforehand you want to let them know the company you are interviewing for the job the position you're interviewing for the uh, the name of the manager and so on and so forth the idea here is not to collude with the with the reference and lie about anything no the idea is just to brief them to keep them in in the loop to let them know to they should be expecting something right you want to let them know the kind of conversation you'll be having with a recruiter you want to be specifically clear about things like skills experience personality traits that you like to highlight you like them to highlight and this will those will be the same traits skills and experience you'll be highlighting during the interview you know what I'm trying to say here is to have co coherence to have synergy between what you say during the interview and what your reference says let alone to the same recruiter again everything must be truthful everything must be clear everything must be must be must be documented and backed up but you don't want to have some kind of uh, some kind of disorganization you know with the the the, the reference saying one thing and you saying another thing and even, even though those two things are kind of related they're not similar right this is one of the reasons why you have you know politicians use something called talking points right so that everybody stays on script you want to have some kind of cohesiveness around the message about your candidacy about your application all right another thing which is number six not keeping tabs on your references and not googling them in advance this is this is this is this is crazily important for if you want to use a reference the first thing you want to do the, the basic you want to do is contacting them via email or via phone right now if you haven't spoken to this reference in a while because you you left your old job maybe uh, five years ago or three years ago the minimum you can do is to google your reference right use it use your preferred search engine to find out what this person is check the social check social media this is very important and you are responsible for the first impressions an employer will form so don't think like oh you know the, you know if they find out something crazy about that reference it's not me it's them no you're the one providing the reference so it is it it really is incumbent upon you to do your homework beforehand all right so you don't want to have you know uh, it, you know say why do you want to google them in advance think about it your reference might no longer no longer work at the company 
where you work, you know, at your former company, the reference might have a lawsuit lodged against him or her. Or even worse, your endorser might have an otherwise disreputable profile on social media. Right? And all this sort of negativity will will tarnish your own reputation. And that's a big no-no. That's the last thing you want. So that's why you want to do your homework in advance. You want to Google them. You want to keep tabs on your references. All right? I'll be right back right after this. Don't go away. Welcome back, folks, to another edition. We're still talking about deadly mistakes to avoid when asked for job references. And uh, this is an important topic because... As I said earlier, nowadays looking for work is analogous to selling a product and you are that product. To execute a proper job hunt, make sure you polish your online presence and have a resume and cover letter. And most importantly, don't forget professional references who can boost your application. So speaking of references, here are the last three fatal mistakes to avoid when asked for endorsers. I've already given you six. We have three more to go. And uh, let's quickly acknowledge some of some beautiful viewers and listeners from Brazil. This is interesting, Brazil. So we have Lucio Barbosa Prado from the beautiful state of the beautiful city of Porto Alegre, Brazil. We have Bettina Higashi Rodriguez from Porto Alegre, Brazil. And Emerson Lopez Araujo. In the beautiful state of uh, not a state, beautiful city of Porto Alegre. Thank you so much. Excuse my pronunciation. I hope that um, I, I got it right. Emerson, Bettina, and Lucio. Thank you for your support. Number seven. Mistake number seven. Not properly saying thank you. This is very important, folks. Your references, your endorsers, are backing you up. They're sticking literally their neck, their necks out for you. Right, what they see on your behalf could, could wane or lose you the job. So be grateful and thankful for the effort. Send them a note of thanks from time to time. Call them on the phone. Send them a box of chocolate. Be nice to them. Right, this is very important to always say thank you. And it's not just for references, by the way, it's just in general, right? And another thing that's very important is that you want to offer to return the favor one day, right? Because you never know when the rules will be reversed. They might need you too. So always be grateful, but also empathetic at the right time. Mistake number eight, providing inadequate references. Now, this is, a, this is important because some candidates believe that they can just use some endorsers, no, no matter the industry, no matter the, the, the job, no matter the role, no matter the industry, no. You want to fit, you want to choose references who fit the job and industry and company you're interviewing for. For example, if you are, say, you are interviewing for a management role at a bank, right? You can't use as a reference someone who is still middle level or entry level that would make sense right so you want to make sure that you have even though you have 10 people to contact as references make sure the references that you choose are off to snuff you want to basically use and the the idea and the um, the easiest is to use people you know from your recent jobs use personal references with caution right because again talking about fitness here you want to make sure your, your references are fit for the role you're interviewing for all right now another and another good thing especially for folks who don't have a lot of experience including uh, recent graduates students you can ask your teachers or professors parent coaches or contacts from your volunteer work volunteer network right to serve as your reference that that's pretty normal that's pretty fine it works out fine all right number nine making it hard to contact your endorsers if your prospective employer realizes it's very complicated to 
contact your endorsers, that's a bad impression from the get-go. You don't want that. So you want to make it very easy for your recruiter, for their for a recruiter to contact your your references. And how do you do that? You gave them an updated email and phone number that you would have double checked or triple checked, right? Of course, this may require a bit of research on your part, right? Especially if the, the reference is from years ago and no longer works at the same place. But make sure everything you present to the recruiter is checked, double checked, triple checked. You know, the last thing you want is your, the recruiter or your your employer being frustrated because they're calling, they're leaving messages, people are not calling them back, right? Nobody wants that. So the thing here is that you want to think about your reputation, you want to think about your um, uh, your posture, your professional posture, how you present yourself, and this starts from the way of, from the way you have, the way you write your cover letter, your resume, the way you answer interview questions, and the way you provide references. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm still here talking about. They're the mistakes to avoid when asked for job references. I give you nine. We're gonna quickly wrap up this uh, this conversation, today's conversation. Before I do this, Madison Cook of Crown Point, New Mexico. Thanks for your support. Rory Shaw, Playas, New Mexico, and Courtney Hart from Tebonito in New, Me New Mexico. We really appreciate your help. What are the nine daily mistakes to avoid when asked for job references? Tell the lies. Having a set of uh, a set list of references, overusing your endorsers, failing to re-alert references in a timely fashion, not preparing your references adequately, not keeping tabs on your references and not googling them in advance, not properly saying thank you, providing inadequate references, and making it, making it hard to contact your endorsers. So this is pretty much it, folks. Now let's quickly move on to. Today's call to action. I want to emphasize an important element when it comes to interviewing, job seeking, and the provision of references, and that is lying. So lying on your resume, of course, I said earlier that lying when it comes to job references is already bad, is immoral, it is unprofessional, it's unethical, and most importantly, it's illegal. So lying on your resume is as bad as twisting the truth when it comes to job references. Make sure you present a truthful picture of your professional journey on paper and verbally. Now, remember, there are several ways. A prospective employer can catch a candidate who has not been forthcoming with the truth about his or her education, career, and achievements. And there are several, and here are the ways. Your alma mater cannot confirm you graduated. The dates don't add up on your resume, right? If they, somebody looks at your resume and cover letter, they see that those two don't, don't match. You have uh, job titles that are very, very uh, too true to be, too good to be true, right? You're not very precise about your uh, experience and skills. Your body language betrays you during the interview, right? You have references that, when called, don't back you up. Or when your employer does a quick Google search or social media search, they realize that there is the discrepancy between what you're telling them and what's online. Or when the employer does a background check, they see that the real truth and they see that this was not what you told them. So my point here is that it's just a lose-lose proposition for any candidate to to lie on the resume, to lie when it comes to job references, to, to lie when it comes to uh, the cover letter, the content of the cover letter, right? So really avoid that. To quickly close this today's conversation, here is the pro tip. You wanna always pick professional references over personal and have a set of references for each specific job position you are targeting. Don't ask someone to be a reference 
for you over email. You want to always contact them or meet them face to face if possible. And most importantly, tell your references where you'll be using them as a reference. All right, folks, I'll be right back. No, I'll be right. This is about it. We are wrapping this up. <laughs> <laughs> so be good. Marvelous. I'll see you next time.